Ooh, I've got an update on Louis Gohmert and some info on Hunter Biden and a tax lien that he's had to deal with. And then I've got a Twitter thread on Beirut that you'll really need to see. And then there's the new information about Julian Assange. So stick with me, folks, and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and oh, I've got lots of good stuff for you, so hang in there. I'm going to try to cover it all as quick as I can here, but remember, you can always double speed things by that uh, going to the settings there and putting it on a different speed in case you just want to save a little bit of time, because I know you can listen faster than I can talk. So anyway, let's look at this. I want to start out with this. Governor Mike Huckabee had this tweet, if Biden won't debate, President Trump, President Trump should just hold the debate anyway against a cardboard cutout of Joe Biden and a random word generator. I doubt many viewers would notice the difference. For sure. Isn't that true? So I wanted to just, you know, start out with a little bit of a chuckle here. We will get into some more serious things later on, but you know, you got to smile once in a while, especially the way things are going these days. You really do. But I'll tell you what, I'm recording this on Saturday. A lot of stuff happened today. I really love Governor Huckabee's sense of humor. I also really get President Trump's sense of humor. And I don't think the press does at all in any way, shape or form, because they never seem to understand when he's joking. And I really appreciated today when when he spoke from Bedminster, I thought that was pretty funny because he had some people there that were watching the press conference and they actually laughed at his jokes. And I think the press probably wasn't very happy about that. But, you know, I guess they need that or a sign or something telling them when it's a joke because they just don't get it. They have no sense of humor. Anyway, so I thought I would uh, share this with you. And then let's get into some other stuff. Today's Patriot channel that I want to spotlight here is The Seeker. And right now has 2.59K subscribers. So I thought maybe that'd be one you'd want to check into and remember you got to click that little subscribe button and then not only do that but make sure you go to all because if you don't go to all you're probably not going to see any of the updates you may you may not it's kind of a gamble so make sure that you hit that all so you can start seeing some of the things that he's putting out and uh, that was nominated by Scott Johnston who said, not sure these all qualify because he gave several. Towergate, the seeker, started channel just to document what happened to President Trump. He does no advertising and does not push his channel, but he goes into deep research for each show. So I don't know about the others. I haven't had a chance to check them yet. But anyway, so thanks there. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, you get this information. I'll put the link down below and you can sub to his channel. And you have to understand that I don't get a chance to check these out thoroughly, you know, like go through and watch several of their videos because I just don't have enough time in the day. So as always, you know me, I want you to use your own judgment and to listen to people and judge what they're saying based on your own research and what you found to be true as well, because I expect you to do that with me too. I don't think you should take everything I say without testing it yourself. It's very important that we do that no matter what. Well, I wanted to give you a little update on this channel that I did um, last time, I think it was, or maybe the time before, I don't remember. But uh, here's the situation, okay? She genuinely has subscribers because I subscribed, see? And I even clicked the bell. I clicked all, but when I came back, it wasn't clicked. And that's why you also have to check that from time to time when you're on channels that you really want to get the notifications for because that bell just somehow gets put down to personalized or none and, uh, you know, you may not be getting it or sometimes you just get unsubscribed without even doing anything. So make sure you check those for the channels you really want to be getting notifications for. Well, here's the deal with her channel. She received a suspension from YouTube. And uh, if you go to, that's why she said, I've been taken down until November 6th. How conveniently until after the election, right? Well, here's more of the explanation here. And this is on a site called U YouTube. 
and so you can watch this i'll leave the links to both of these down below but this one right here you really need to watch this one this is not about her situation at all but this is a pastor who is talking about the problems with his own church and how they're facing something that is becoming national and they never intended it to be they just want to be able to worship so this is really good it's about 10 and a half minutes you really need to watch this one too but here is her explanation of what happened and she genuinely didn't know until y'all went to her channel and left the note about my video about her and she checked it out and she didn't have any idea that youtube had just dumped a big bunch of her subscribers and so now she saw it through the social blade site that I showed you and it had that great big dip there where she lost almost 900 subscribers she went from zero subscribers lost 900 subscribers and still had zero subscribers so you know they're messing with her and so she was very upset about that and she tells you a little bit more about it here you can go and watch it even without signing up but if you want to comment or anything like that you can do that down below so here's where this one over here YouTube dropped me in the memory hole is where she plays a little bit of clip of mine and shows that chart from social blade so these two together will give you more of a better picture of what happened to her and she says she's not planning on coming back to YouTube so we'll see what happens I mean it's it's a tough world out there it really is and we need to make sure that we're encouraging people that are putting themselves on the line to get kind of um, attacked by these different social media accounts so anyway before I go on because I do have more on that subject but I wanted to show you this video right here uh, you know I've never heard this story before I can't say that it's a hundred percent accurate but it is about the Star Spangled Banner and it is a beautiful story when you watch this it will make you so proud to be an American and you know when I saw it it's kind of a little clickbait ish Star Spangled Banner as you've never heard it well I thought oh great it's gonna be somebody singing it in a different way no that's not what this is this is the story about why those words were penned and I just think it's a beautiful story you really need to hear it it may not be a hundred percent historically accurate but oh it just makes you want to stand up and cheer and hug the flag so I'll leave the link to that down below too then I wanted to point out to you that yes there is a massive purge going on right now on Twitter and if you have a Twitter account you may or may not have lost a big chunk of people we're talking 700 followers all at one time that's just not normal sorry that doesn't happen on Twitter so this guy right here Tony Heller has um, some data to show on that as to what's happening to him so I think this would be a really good one for you to watch because um here's my theory on all of this and I differ from a lot of people there are other people who are content creators who have just decided to chuck um, the whole YouTube experience and like I said that's what the lady back here decided to do because she says I won't be back she's not planning on coming back to YouTube I mean she may leave her channel up but she doesn't plan on really coming back and posting more videos or anything like that and in my opinion I look at YouTube and Twitter and all of these as kind of the front lines in the information battle right now and if I leave and I go to another platform sure that may be better for me it may be less stress or anything like that I may be able to not have to jump through all the hoops but how are people going to hear the truth if I go to another platform you see the thing with this I really actually like this huge tube a platform it works very similarly to YouTube and it's pretty smooth and it's running and everything but the people who are here probably already know a lot of the truth and that's why they've come here because they're tired of being censored if I stay here on YouTube then I'm gonna be reaching people that are outside of the truth circle right now and imagine this okay if like let's compare it to being at church I go to church 
so I can be refreshed and equipped so when I go out into the world, I'm ready to take on the world to, to do the spiritual battle that's necessary. And if I only stay within my church building and talk to people who are within my church building, I'm really not doing a whole lot of good. I need to use the strength and energy and everything that I've gained from being inside my church, from worshiping, from being with other believers. And then I use that to strengthen me, to equip me so I can go out into the world and tell people about the gospel of Christ. That's what I do. That It's evangelism, okay? It's a type of ministry, a mission field, if you want to say it that way. And that's kind of what I see this whole thing as being. I know a lot of you already know the truth, but I hope that maybe, possibly, somebody will stumble on my videos and start thinking, oh, I didn't know that was happening. I didn't know that was happening. And so this is how I view it. Now, everybody has to take on their own battles. You know, God equips us all differently for different tasks. So it may not be your task to be on Twitter or to be on YouTube. Maybe yours is Facebook. Maybe it's just talking to your neighbors or whatever the case is. We're all, we all have different abilities and we just need to use those abilities in the best way possible to make sure that this election ends up putting our president back in office so he can finish the job he was put in there to do. So again, I, I don't want to totally compare it to Christianity because this is not a Christian mission, but some of it actually is because we're seeing a very distinct battle between good and evil. And I see it that way in a lot of cases. I see more of a spiritual battle happening than I do even, you know, with some of these different ideas that are floating around. I mean, those are important too, but really they all come back to a spiritual issue. But anyway, that's, that's for other channels. I could go on and on about that, but I just wanted to point this out to you because I think it's very important for y'all to know. Now, this is a, a website here that will show you if you're shadow banned. And I had this all set up, but for some reason their server is not connecting. <laughs> But it shows you if you're being shadow banned, which means you think you're posting stuff and people can see it, but nobody's seeing it or very few people will see it. The search suggestion ban is where you type in somebody's name in the search on Twitter and it doesn't give you a result. Okay. And that actually happened. I was looking up a doctor's um, handle and I had it typed in totally correct and it gave me absolutely no suggestions. So he was being um, kind of banned in the suggestion. They weren't going to help me out and give me any chance to, do, to complete his name. So that's happening. Uh, you know, the search ban is where you try to search for them and they, you know, don't show up at all. Ghost ban. I can't remember what the ghost ban is. Um, it's like just shadow banning, I guess. So you would not see, people wouldn't see, like if I was replying to somebody, they wouldn't see that. And then the deboosting. So these are ways that you can be shadow banned. And normally this is pretty effective. But like I said, for some reason, of course, tonight when I want to use it, it worked fine last night. <laughs> not tonight. Uh, it had me being uh, banned, I think. I think there was a search suggestion ban. Um, reply to boosting because that means, you know, they hide me down below so people can't see me. You have to click up, you know, a link to open it to see the ones below the line. Uh, I think there was a search ban. I can't remember. There were several of these that existed. Well, Twitter has also changed their terms a little bit because they were claiming that they don't shadow ban, but now they've changed it to say that they reserve the right to limit distribution or visibility of content. How is that not a publisher? That right there is what a publisher does. Of course, but you know... Twitter wants to say that it's not a publisher, it's a platform. So it gets to section 230, immunity. Well, 
Um, I would not be surprised with the way President Trump is doing executive orders. He did four today. It was great. And I know the reason he's doing that is because of the Supreme Court decision where Roberts threw in with the liberals and allowed this to happen because he put more power on Obama's DACA decision as an executive order than it should have had, even though it was not legal they were putting more emphasis on that. And because of that, Trump has now decided, I'm just going to be doing all these. I'm going to fix things with my pen. So he has done that. And it's going to be very hard for the Democrats to to question that legally because this, of that Supreme Court decision. So it's going to be really interesting what happens But anyway, I think probably we're going to eventually see some kind of executive order that's going to address this issue, because if they don't stop censoring us, we're not going to have any chance to, you know, get the truth out there. And it's getting worse all the time. You don't know how many people I have seen on Twitter who said that they just suddenly had no followers left. And I've seen it, actually, there's another program I use called Unfollow Spy that helps me be able to kind of manage my account and, you know, kind of get rid of people that are not following me back because you got to keep that balance. And um, on that, I've noticed that there were a lot of people that it said zero, zero, zero. Their accounts were either suspended or something So it's happening a lot and we need to stick together because it's only going to get worse. It really is. But hey, this is our mission field. So we're taking it on, right? I wanted to point out this This is by Carpe Donctum. And this is a really good video. There was uh, about the explosion, whatever it was. There's one video that's going out that had a missile in there. That video is fake. And he shows you in this video, he shows you why it's fake. Okay. He gives you a very good reason why he believes it's fake. And, uh, you know, he's got some pretty great skills when it comes to video editing more so than I do. So, (laughs) um, you need to listen to what he has to say, because I think it's very important. Then speaking of what happened in Beirut, I think you need to read this thread. It is a very long thread. I think it has 66, 67, 68, somewhere in there, uh, different posts, but oh, wow, it has so much information and, you know, you can see the videos. It has, videos to back up what he's talking about and everything. So I'm going to leave the link to this down below. I highly recommend you read this one. It's very informative. So then I wanted to talk about this guy. Well, this guy has a thing for um, writing hit pieces on Mr. 17. Okay. He is like the poster child for writing them. If you look at most of the hit pieces, they seem to come back to him. And guess who he works for? Media Matters. Yep, that's who this guy is. See, right there, Media Matters. And uh, he has only 10.5K followers, which I think is kind of funny because, you know, supposed to be having all these connections with all the Democrats and that's not that many followers. There are a lot of conservatives who have a whole ton more followers. Well, he's been writing these um, hit pieces. He even talked to the French and wrote a hit piece here. Well, I don't think he wrote the hit piece. They interviewed him and then wrote it. It's all in French, but it is a hit piece. It's pretty much what he says all the time. And then they go through and You know, he retweets things that, see, they're just crazy people that follow the 17th letter of the alphabet. They're just crazy. Now we've got all these people, these candidates that are talking about it. And, oh, it's just so awful. Yeah. And what's really disturbing is I saw a report from West Point where they do, they have like this research group that uh, researches people who do a lot of bad things. And they reference this guy. That is their source for making that decision. He absolutely hates the 17th letter of the alphabet. But what I wanted to point out to you is when he posts these things, he gets like no retweets, one retweet and only seven likes. I understand that one's in French. Okay, I'll give it to you on that. 
But then he retweeted this one, which if you haven't seen that, it's really creepy. There's a button underneath here that makes the doll say other stuff. So that was creepy. Um, but look, you know, even with this, he only had 165 retweets and 266 likes. These are not very many at all. This one, 33 retweets and 60 likes. This guy is a nobody. He is a nobody for 19. I mean, serious. They're trying to paint the 17th letter of the alphabet as just horrible and um, one of those T groups, but he, he's nobody. He has very little. Oh, and here he's upset because Trump quoted somebody who had that, you know, on their account. Oh, my goodness. But he only had 26 retweets and 46 likes. I mean, this is nothing. But this is what he's doing. And he said here, by the way, that uh, Twitter is now blocking links to BitChute, which uh, I thought was not nice. But I'm sure that's what the crackdown is. And they banned, Twitter has banned this website. So you can't um, put that link in anymore. I don't believe you can put in the other one, the .pub site. You can't do that one either. Um, yeah, so they've been doing a lot of stuff. I mean, this guy, this is what his life is. I guess this is all he likes to do. He supposedly does other things, but I'm not seeing it here. This is all 17th letter of the alphabet stuff. Hit jobs, hit jobs, lies. I mean, you would not believe the stuff that he writes about it. So I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, there he is. That's one of the guys that's causing a lot of the problems and getting people booted. So then I want to get you to this because I had, oh, Oh, I forgot who it was. I'll put the name in here. Thank you for suggesting this. Somebody in the comments asked if I had any updates on Louis Gomer. So I thought, oh, I can go find something. So I did. I went to his uh, YouTube channel. And sure enough, here's a 20-minute interview with Louis. He's doing well. He has been just a little bit sick. But he got on the protocol right off the bat, and he's doing very, very well. He had to drive himself home because he wasn't allowed to have public transportation. If he was going to be quarantined, he wanted to be quarantined at home. And so, yeah, all the way from D.C. to Texas. But he's a great guy. Uh, this was a very good interview. He seems to be doing very well. So, uh, and he's, you know, saying that he was wearing a mask. And he actually had been wearing a mask much more before he got sick. Hmm, that's interesting. So anyway, there he is. And you, I'll leave the link down below and you can watch this because it was a good interview. Now let's talk a little bit about the Bidens here, okay? Because guess what? The Biden family has a history of tax problems. I don't know what the deal is, but evidently they don't like to pay their taxes when they're supposed to pay them course the rest of us we get in trouble if we don't do that but yeah anyway um hunter biden was hit with a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar tax lien last month but check this out look what it says here hunter biden was hit with a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar lien in july over delinquent state income taxes which he paid off in six days despite having no discernible income Last year, he told the court judge in his paternity case that he was broke and unemployed. Hmm. So, how does a broke, unemployed person just suddenly, within six days, come up with $450,000? I don't know. I couldn't do that. I don't know about you. But you go down through this, and it's like, the the lien is the latest in a series of substantial tax problems members of the Biden family have faced over the years, from Joe's brother James's six-figure tax debt in 2015 to multiple liens filed against Joe's sister, Valerie, and her husband. It also raises new questions about Hunter Biden's finances, which have been scrutinized during the election cycle. Okay, and so you go through this, and it, this guy, this Harvey Bezosi, 
a tax expert who specializes in large-scale tax debt negotiations, said the only way to get a lien released is to pay the settlement in full, often through a payment plan, penalty abatement, or other compromise with the government, or to prove the lien was filed in error. He said liens can take months or years to resolve. It drags on, he said. Six days had to be some kind of expeditious kind of process for this. So, hmm, what happened there? And then when you look down here, they've had all kinds of tax liens. I mean, look at all these. Uh, James Biden, $589,095 filed in 2015 and released one year later. Boy, you know. They turn it around pretty fast. Frank Biden, another brother of the presidential candidate, has had at least three liens for unpaid income taxes. You know, these people just don't pay their taxes. And his, his sister Valerie and her husband have faced at least five tax liens. I mean, serious. So kind of interesting what's going on with Hunter and the Joe Biden campaign is, of course, starting to go on the defense about this because, you know, they've got to have something. So, if you remember in my last video, I had the letter from Senator Johnson and Senator Grassley that was talking about this Burisma investigation they've been doing. Okay, now they've been doing this for a while, kind of got put on hold because of COVID, but yeah, they've really been working at it. They're trying to get information. Uh, they asked for access to any State Department correspondence with Hunter Biden or Burisma or any of the involved parties there or the Blue Star strategies as well. And so they've been trying to get that. Well, now the Biden campaign is starting to go back at them. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to say that um, down here, they sent a memo as the November elections near Biden's campaign is going on the defensive, no longer protected by the nation's focus on COVID-19. The former vice president's campaign has largely remained quiet on the matter until a memo was released Tuesday by Biden's deputy campaign manager, Kate Bedingfield. And sorry, I don't have the memo, so I don't know exactly what it said, but the memo made personal attacks against the panel chairman who heads the Homeland Security Committee, Ron Johnson. The memo suggested, get this, the memo suggested the Wisconsin Republican could be party to a foreign influence operation and suggested he was worsening the coronavirus crisis by investigating Burisma. <laughs> How? How does that happen? How are those two connected? Well, we know how they're connected. They've got to try to get these guys off of the trail because Grassley's the bloodhound. He's not going to give up until he gets what he wants. So um, they're saying that Johnson's wasting taxpayer dollars on a blatantly dishonest attempt to help Donald Trump get elected, adding this sham is a windfall for Russian disinformation Democrats just do not learn. Oh, I guess. So this is the thing. This is why the other letters that I read in the last video make sense. Okay. They come together. And I knew there was probably something else that was going on to make Johnson and Grassley so ticked off in their letter but I wasn't sure what had happened in there. Well, this evidently, this memo must have been what happened. And so, yeah, they're trying to blame them and to claim that Johnson and Grassley are being influenced by Russian disinformation and they're trying to spread that. And so that's why they were so adamant about it. Makes more sense now. I knew there had to be something else I wasn't quite picking up on. Well, this one right here, the Biden campaign gives Dem operatives talking points from New York Times in Reed Defense. Now, this was from April 29th. So I didn't know that they had done this too, but yeah, guess what? On April 12th, they released this paper, a lengthy investigation, and I put that in air quotes, into Biden's accuser, titled Examining Tara Reed's Sexual Assault Allegation Against Joe Biden. When the official Twitter account released the article, eyebrows were raised at the tweeted statement of the article Look at what it says. The Times found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Mr. Biden beyond the hugs, kisses, and touching that women previously said made them uncomfortable. Well, duh. 
Isn't that exactly what it is? That's the sexual misconduct that he was being accused of. Um, I don't want this guy groping me. I don't know him. Oh, I did deck him. I'm sorry. He'd have been curled up grabbing at his uh, privates if he'd have been messing with me. But anyway, so that's what this one is about. So I'll leave these links down below. You can read the whole thing because after that came out, then, of course, it was changed to the Times found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Mr. Biden, period. <laughs> they didn't include the beyond the hugs and everything. So, you know, they are just such liars. And so I wanted to make sure that you saw that one, too. I'll leave the link down below. Both of these are from Greg Jarrett's site. So um, now speaking of not always being accurate, and I want to correct this because I don't want to be guilty of disinformation. I didn't really think things through with this George Floyd video that I put out. It did kind of look like him had the same name. Well, not exactly the same name because this George Floyd is junior and this one in the video that I showed, I think was like the fourth or something like that. But he did kind of look like him, a younger version of himself. But according to Carmen, thank you so much, Carmen, um, for this, because I do want to be accurate. And she said, while a George Floyd did appear on the Judge Judy show in an episode confirmed to have aired in 2010 by CBS, the 17-year-old who appears in the video would be 27 years old today. George Floyd was 46 when he died on May 25th. So, um, yeah, I apologize for that. I should have thought a little bit harder on it. But, you know, Judge Judy's just been on forever, so I kind of lost track of time on it. But, yeah. So I needed to check that a little bit better. But thank you again, Carmen, because I do want to be accurate in what I say and what I give to you guys to put out there. Uh, this James Todaro has been just being slammed for his positions because, of course, he stands very stoutly for the medicine that is helping Louis Gohmert right now. So he says, dangers of Tylenol versus HCQ prior to COVID-19. Deaths attributed to HCQ since 1963. About 20 deaths worldwide. Just wrap your brain around that. About 20 deaths since 1963. So how safe is this? Seems pretty safe to me with that kind of statistic. Deaths attributed to Tylenol every year about 500 deaths in USA alone. So I'm sorry, it is definitely something that should not be dismissed. And he gives you this information down here too. So I'll leave the link to this down below so you can check out this information because that stunned me about Tylenol. Wow, that's a lot of people. And when you compare the two, there's no reason why there should be such controversy over this drug. There shouldn't be. And then this doctor, this is what he has to say. The government uses anecdotal evidence to mandate masks, but rejects anecdotal evidence to allow HCQ. So there is a double standard. I mean, Fauci was so adamant that we not have any anecdotal evidence that we don't consider that very valid because it's only anecdotal evidence when it came to this drug. But when it comes to masks, this is exactly what they're relying on. Totally anecdotal evidence. And so I've been saying this for a while. It was kind of nice to see an actual doctor say it. So uh, he's been pummeled too. I mean, these doctors that stand up and dare to question, they're being attacked like crazy. Well, speaking of crazy, <laughs> yeah. This is uh, on Mi uh, Michigan Advance website. Oh, Whitmer signs directive declaring racism a public health crisis in Michigan. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know how she did that. How? How? <laughs> that makes no sense. And so she is trying to desperately grab on and hold her, her power and she has to have some kind of health emergency. So she's just like deciding what is and isn't a health emergency now. It doesn't have to have anything to do with your health. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure how she can justify this. I don't understand 
why I, I just don't. So I'll leave this article down below for you. When I heard this the other day, it was like, what? How? How? And I'm still at that point. I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. Well, speaking of other people, I've got a little bit of info on Julian Assange here because there is a lawsuit out there. And we've talked about this before because Fox News had an article about Mr. Rich shortly after his death and stated that there were some indications that he had contact with WikiLeaks and that there was someone who had witnessed that and could testify to it. Well, guess what? There was an order signed by a U.S. judge today, and they're asking for, yeah, the Hague Convention. Here's the document itself, and here's what it says. Request for international judicial assistance pursuant to the Hague Convention of 18 March 1970 on the taking of evidence abroad in civil or commercial matters. The United States District Court for the Southern District of New York presents its compliments to the Senior Master of the Royal Courts of Justice and respectfully requests international judicial assistance in accordance with the Hague Convention of 18, of 18 March 1970 on the taking of evidence abroad in civil or commercial matters, Hague Convention, as implemented into English law by the Evidence, Proceedings, and Other Jurisdictions Act 1975, the 1975 Act, to obtain evidence in England to be used in the above-captioned judicial proceeding. Specifically, this court requests that the senior master, by the proper and usual process of your courts, direct Julian Assange, located at prisoner here, Belmarsh, here to appear for testimony based on the pending claims between plaintiffs Joel and Mary Rich and defendants Fox News Network Malia Zimmerman and Ed Batowski this court believes that the testimony of Mr. Julian Assange will be highly relevant to the adjudication of the above captioned matter this testimony shall serve as Mr. Assange's trial evidence in that matter and so you can go through, if you don't know the situation there, it's all down here. I think it starts on page four, if I recall correctly, because um, Mr. Rich's father and mother want, they want Fox News to retract that um, Mr. Rich had anything to do with the uh, WikiLeaks um, and the release of all those internal emails from the DNC okay so here basically is the nature of it the story in case you don't know about it in case you're not aware but this just kind of lays it all out and remember this these are the defendants that are putting this out but they're the ones that have claimed we need to have Julian Assange testify now will he Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. And then we also know he's very resistant to giving up any of his sources. However, if the source is deceased, I'm not sure that he would have the same problems with that. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it, this should be interesting. And they're just asking the Hague Convention to kind of step in because they're having problems getting him uh, so to the point where they can have him testify. So wanted to share that with you. And then I think this is a very good point by Matt Gates. He says, why is the DOJ not in federal court seeking an injunction against social media companies to stop them from election interference? Because that's what's happening, especially when they do purges like you know, saw earlier. And if you look at this, you know, it just talks more about it. I actually think that if the DOJ doesn't take that step, that um, we're probably going to see another executive order. Just think that's going to happen, okay? So uh, it's going to be handled. It is going to be taken care of. Oh, it's going to be addressed. It's just how and when. And I think this probably would be a good thing to do, but um, I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay, and then the last thing I have for you, I want to leave you with this because somebody had it posted on Twitter and I saw it a long time ago when it happened. It was uh, December 8th, uh, yeah, December 8th of 2019 and it was in Hollywood, Florida is where it took place. This was the President Trump delivers remarks at the Israeli-American Council National Summit of 2019 and uh, 
it's a good speech. I mean, you can listen to the whole speech if you want to, but this very ending here, I need you to see this. Okay, so here we go. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet They are fantastic. Thank you. Shalva Band. Thank you. Fantastic. So it's been a great honor to be with you tonight. God bless Israel. God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just love how they all came running over. And, you know, the two singers, I believe both of them were blind. This one, of course, is. Uh, I think this one was blind as well. And... Trump made sure that he reached out to touch them as well through this. And these guys hugging him, just so heartwarming. This is the side of Trump that the mainstream media never lets anyone see. Because this is the man we know and we understand this is his heart. He loves these people and you can see how he treats them, each one like they are just a special precious gift. So, you know, this is Donald Trump, and I wish more people would see this and would understand it. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.